So I get asked all the time in this job, hey Jordo, I need a new car, what should I buy? And after I tell them, you should probably buy a Porsche 911, and they look at me funny, we'll always generally end up somewhere slightly more realistic with something like this, the Hyundai Kona. In fact, if they want to buy something electric, we'll almost always end up with somewhere like this, the Hyundai Kona. In fact, that's good news, because it also happens to be our 2023 car of the year. So, what we have in front of us is the new second generation Hyundai Kona, a small to mid-sized crossover that's available in a petrol, hybrid or pure electric model. So this one is the electric one, and as you can tell, it strikes a pretty cool sci-fi sort of pose, doesn't it? But what you need to know is that size-wise, this car is around the same sort of size as a Kia Neo or a Toyota CHR, and is slightly bigger and wider than something like a Peugeot E2008 or a Vauxhall Mokka. It comes in two battery sizes and with two power figures, starting out at the lower end with a 154 brake horsepower motor and a 48 kilowatt hour battery, which posts around 239 miles from a charge. This, however, is the long range model, which means that it comes with a larger 65 kilowatt hour battery pack and a slightly more powerful 214 brake horsepower motor. Now, it'll do anywhere between 282 and 319 miles from a charge, but you'll need to pay for that extra range because whereas the standard Kona Electric starts at around 35,000 pounds, this one's over 40, although you do get a few more toys for your money. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, it looks pretty different to Hyundai's spacey Ionic series cars, well, you'd be right, this is a bit more conservative, but I would say that there's still plenty of cool styling tricks going on here. For instance, this light bar is very Blade Runner, isn't it? And unlike the petrol models, the EV has little squares. It's broken up in the middle, which is a reference to the Ionic models. The headlights themselves are actually down here in these units, and the charge port is also at the front, which is actually quite handy for most public charging scenarios. Order your Kona in a petrol or hybrid form, and these wheel arch surrounds are actually finished in a contrasting colour, helping reinforce that SUV vibe. Unless, of course, you choose for the N-Line, which regardless of engine choice, seems to take a book of starting cues from a Power Rangers comic. There's some really cool design details around the back as well. There is another light bar and segmented tail lights. These ones have got the LED brake lights, indicators, and a halogen reverse light, which is a bit bizarre. There's also square detailing, like there is on the front. And for some reason, I really like the third brake light and the rear fog light, which are both aligned and kind of look like that sort of on switch on a kettle or an iron or something. Don't know why I like it, but I do. So to the interior of this car, which I'm finding really interesting. Unusually for a car of this class, it's got a real sci-fi vibe, kind of similar to the outside. And it's probably the interior colour that helps here, but it feels very fresh and very modern. Now, in addition to the standard two 12.3 inch screens, there's also lots of buttons. And overall, it's got a bit of a Star Trek-y sort of vibe, which I think is kind of cool. As well as a row of buttons for the Hi-Fi and the Nav over here, there is an additional row of buttons for the HVAC, which is excellent news. As any anxious motorway EV driver will know, having the heating on does affect the range, but this car's actually got quite a clever thing called the driver only mode for the fan, which should cut energy consumption. All the auxiliary functions are also placed down here. There's a switch for the driver mode, plus heated and cooled seats on this high-end model, plus a heated steering wheel and access to your camera. The touchscreen itself is very clear and easy to use, which is especially useful on the move. It's not a particularly frilly system, but it works. And there's also obviously Android Auto and CarPlay. The driver's display in front of you does that cool Hyundai Kia thing where if you put the indicators on, it shows a video of your blind spot. But otherwise, again, simple, easy, clear to read. It does the job. Material and build quality in here is perfectly fine for this type of class. And while it's not quite as plush as you'll find in some European rivals like Peugeot or something like that, they are very robust and even this light colour seems to be holding up quite well. One thing that I'm not so sure about is the gear selector, which is right down here on the column. It's great because it saves a bit of space in the centre console, but it actuates by having to twist forward in order to go forward, which for me feels a bit the wrong way around, whereas I want to pull back to go forward. I don't know. Anyway, it's a little quirk of the car, but I'm sure you'll get used to it. This probably won't come as a shock to anyone, but on the road, the Kona is perfectly happy at being a city-based dweller or a more open road companion, being both comfortable and very easy to drive. So Hyundai actually has a pretty good track record of the control weights for its EVs, and the Kona is no different. The throttle is smooth and consistent and doesn't feel too jumpy, whereas the old car sometimes could feel a little bit too aggressive. The other good thing is, is that the regenerative braking is very clever and it's actuated by these paddles and you can go all the way from having absolutely no regeneration right up to what they call eye pedal, which means that you can come to a full stop without needing to touch the brakes. 
the brake pedal feel itself is actually also quite good. As is so often with EVs, what they do is that they try to mimic something called a chauffeur stop, which is where you lift off the brake just as you're coming to a stop. Now, I naturally do that in a petrol car, but because it does it for you, sometimes with EVs, you can kind of feel like you're chasing the brake in order to come to a full stop. Now, in this car, through those different regeneration modes, it's not really a problem. The ride is very good, I have to say. It feels like there's quite a lot of weight fairly low down, which does help with the damping, but then at the same time, you don't feel so far up above that weight that it can get a bit bobbly and, and uncomfortable. It feels like there's quite good travel and suspension, which something like an ID3 really struggles with. The steering is well weighted and nicely precise. It's not too fast as well, which is quite a nice addition. But overall, the entire driving experience absolutely goes to the core of its driver, which is to say, it's great for people who just want to get to where they're going rather than necessarily have a good time. The crucial thing is, is that it's super comfortable, super refined, and for the price point, actually very impressive. As with lots of EVs, there are various driver modes to select between. Eco obviously will soften down the throttle pedal and eke out range. That's the speed limit change awareness thing, ignore that. The normal mode is pretty nice and balanced and sport mode, if we click it over, will give you a nice little jolt of power. There's also a snow mode, uh, which gives you a little bit of extra slip with the traction control to help you get up those slippery slopes in winter. Performance in this larger battery model is pretty good. It'll get to 62 miles an hour in 7.3 seconds and acceleration is more than enough for daily driving needs. Please excuse the beeps, that is once again the speed limit awareness system. Which I wasn't speeding, don't worry. Now, quite a lot of my colleagues who drove the last Kona Electric did say that it felt like a bit of a handful, especially in low grip situations, and I think that was just because they stuck a slightly too powerful motor on the front axle. Also specific to this larger battery pack is 102 kilowatt DC fast charging, which will get the battery from about 10 to 80% in 40 minutes or so, which is about right for the class against something like a VW ID3 or the smart hashtag one. It is, however, worth remembering that the electric Kona is part of a very crowded segment, and a lot of those rivals have some very snazzy features and sharp price points to go with them. When it comes to direct mainstream rivals, we think the Kona has the legs on cars like the VW ID3 or Cooper Born, both of which start just north of £35,000 and offer comparable range estimates and battery sizes. But we think it's this new era of EVs that could be a bigger problem. That aforementioned smart hashtag one is a little rough around the edges, but it has character and appeal and for 35 grand will also match the VW Group cars for range and performance. Volvo Slick EX30 is only a few grand more with the mid-sized battery pack that aces all of these options for range and arguably cool factor. The reality is though, all of these cars are more expensive than a combustion powered car of the equivalent size, but it's a balance that Hyundai looks to have struck really well with the Kona. So yes, spending 35 to 40,000 pounds on a car of this sort of size is a bit hard to swallow, but that's just how much EVs cost these days. Plus, most of you are gonna be buying it on a monthly anyway, and so if the numbers are right, we can't recommend this one highly enough.